Okay, so I did linear drag in one dimension uh, that was moving horizontal. So now what would happen if you drop a ball with linear drag? So linear drag uh, says that the, the force on a ball depends on the velocity. Actually, I wrote that backwards. Let's say F equals negative BV. So where B is some constant. Okay, um, and so the faster you go, the greater the force. Uh, there's other kinds of drag forces that are proportional to the velocity squared, but in this case, we're dealing with linear drag. So if I have this ball falling just like this, it's in one dimension, but now it's vertical. It's, it's moving in one dimension. There were some people complaining the last time saying it was a one-dimensional ball. No, okay. So let's write uh, the y uh, f net equation. So f net in the y direction it's going to be equal to this value, which is going to be this force, which is negative BV. And yes, so that is negative, right? Because it has a Y, if the ball's moving down, the velocity is negative in the negative Y direction. So that negative sign does need to be there. And then I have the gravitational force in the Y direction would be negative MG. And so those two do add, uh, you know, are in different directions. I know that looks weird. And that's just going to be equal to M dV dt. Now, the last time we did this, it didn't have this term right here. And so it was really easy to separate Vs on one side and Ts on the other side. So in this case, we're going to do something similar. Imagine that I drop the ball from rest, and it starts like this. It only has the gravitational force acting on it, so it increases in speed this way. But then it gets faster and faster, so this starts getting greater and greater. And eventually, it gets to the part where the, in theory, where the drag force is equal to the gravitational force and the ball no longer increases in speed but reaches a constant speed. This is terminal velocity. So at terminal velocity the net force in the y direction is equal to zero. So it's going to be this force, I'm going to write this as negative b v t, the terminal velocity, minus mg equals zero because it's moving at a constant speed so the derivative of velocity is zero. So if I solve this for v t I get v t equals negative mg over b. That's my terminal velocity. Is that right? Yeah, so the velocity would have to be going down. So this has to be a negative number. Okay. Um, the magnitude of that would be just mg over b, though. Okay, so now let's look at this equation, and I'm going to divide everything by b, both sides of the equation. So this becomes uh, negative v minus mg over b equals m over b dv dt. This is the terminal velocity. So I can write that as negative v plus the terminal velocity equals m over b dv dt. Now I have this term right here. Um, and in fact, I could rewrite this. Let's write this as uh, v minus vt equals negative mb dv dt. That way I have it in this term right here. Okay, so now let me, let's say, let u, u, or me, just kidding, the letter u, u equals v minus the terminal velocity. So if I want to make that substitution right here, I can. But what about over here? Well, the du dt is going to be equal to dv dt minus this, but that's a constant. So instead of dv dt, I can put du dt. Instead of that, I can put this. So I get, let me write it right here before I move on. This, I get u equals negative m over b du dt. That's an easier equation. And in fact, it's the same as the horizontal linear drag without gravitational force, but we're going to solve it anyway. Okay, so how do you solve that equation? Let's just write it again. U equals negative m over b du dt. This is bothering me. Stay. Okay. Now I'm going to uh, divide both sides by, I'm going to get this all variable separable. So I'm going to get the dt's on one side and the u's on the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides by u and multiply both, both sides by uh, this term. So this can become, I, I'm skipping a step and I hope that's okay. So I'm going to get du over u equals negative b over m dt. 
Is that right? B over M. I feel like I feel like that's right. But I also am questioning myself, right? You know, you know how you question yourself. Okay, let's see. So the B would be on the top. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So now I can integrate both sides. So I'm going to get... People complain about my integral sign too, and I'm not sure why. Uh, so I'll just do it the best I can. DU U prime from U0 to U. So this prime notation is because I want to in, end up with an integration... Uh, limit of u so I can get a function uh, but then I can't integrate with that same variable because that is really that's like uh, that's like just not cool so don't do that uh, so that's going to be equal to the integral from t equals 0 to t of negative b over m dt prime so both of these integrals are pretty easy uh, this is the natural log so I'm going to get the natural log of u over u0 right because I have to evaluate the limits and like I said before, this is great because now I'm taking the natural log of a unitless quantity, and that's cool. Okay, You can't take the natural log of meters per second. That's not cool. Uh, and over here, I'm going to get equals negative b over m t min you know, minus 0. So that's all there is. Now I'm going to take the uh, raises to the power of e to both sides. So I get, um, and this is the same as before, so I'll link that over there. Uh, down below u e to the negative b over m t and that's my function of u as a function of time but I still need v right so now let's go back and I said that u is equal to v minus v t so let's plug that in over here and I get v minus v t oh yeah equals I'm gonna leave this as u zero e to the negative b over m t because what's u zero right u zero doesn't have to be v zero so let's say uh, u zero at time t equals zero is going to be v zero minus v t so I need to put that in there too so I get I'm going to add this v t to the other side I get v as a function of time is v t plus v zero is that right yeah v zero minus v t e to the negative b over m t. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah. And that's a constant and that's you could multiply this out if you wanted to. Actually I guess I could get the VTs together and make it look like I did before. Let's do that. So let's combine let's multiply this out. I get VT plus V0 e to the negative B T over M minus vt e to the negative bt over m. Now I can combine these two together. That's kind of weird. Whatever. I get, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's, that makes sense. vt times 1 minus e to the negative bt over m plus v0 e to the negative bt over m. Yeah, so this term shows that as t gets uh, bigger and bigger, it does get approach a terminal velocity, so that's good. Okay, uh, and that term goes away. Okay, I'm pretty happy. That's that's good. Uh, but now, what about the uh, position as a function of time? So let me just write this up here. Uh, v as a function of time equals v t one minus e to the negative b t over m plus v zero e to the negative b t over m. So this is equal to dy dt. So I can multiply both sides by uh, t, and I get uh, dy equals vt 1 minus e to the negative bt over m dt plus v0 e to the negative bt over m dt. Now I can integrate both sides. So I'm going to integrate this from uh, y0 prime to y, turn that into this, and this from t equals 0 to t prime, 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 prime. And I actually have two, I have a sum of, of terms, so I can integrate those separately. So this is just going to be integrating this side, I get y minus y0, and then over here I get, um, I get vt times 1 times dt prime, so it's going to be vt t. 
minus zero. Now I get this next term, I'm gonna get uh, minus, or plus actually, VT M over B E to the negative B T prime, that one's already evaluated, I'm gonna save this one to evaluate, T prime over M from zero to T plus, now I get the same thing with V zero, uh, negative, this one's gonna be negative, that one already had ne negative V zero M over B E to the negative B T prime over M from zero to T. Okay, this is kind of complicated, but that's fine. Y equals Y zero plus V T T. Now this is gonna be equal to plug in the T and then the zero, so I'm gonna get V T M, or oh, is that the plus off? Sorry. V T M over B, uh, and then I'm gonna get E to the negative B T over M minus one, because I put in T equals zero. And then the same thing over here, I get minus, um, I don't know why I did that, V zero M over B, and this is going to be equal to, I took the minus out, so I'm going to get e to the negative bt over m minus 1. Now, I have this term in here twice, so I can factor that out. Um, I guess I should do that. Uh, y equals y0 plus vtt plus, that's a t, plus, now I have this term right here. Let's put that one first e to the negative b t over m minus one. Now I have this term, v t m over b, and then have this one minus v zero m over b. Okay, that's it. Okay, so that has units of meters, that has units of meters, that has units of meters, this has no units, and this has units of meters. I'm pretty sure. I think this is good. So what I'll do next is to uh, I'll make a numerical model like I did before and test that this is the same as finding the motion of a mass by by using uh, forces and, and a numerical calculation. I'll put that in the next in another video. I, I might do another video first. So, and I might have made a mistake. I might have missed a plus sign, but that's fine. I'll talk to you guys later.